Welcome to Wholesale Hotline, where we cover everything to do with wholesale real estate. I'm Jamil Damji. I'm Brent Daniels. And I am Pace Morby. And together we cover the most important parts of wholesale real estate. Lead generation. Conversion of sellers into contracts. And dispositions. Guys, remember when you're watching this show, do us a favor and squad up in the comments. Make sure that you are liking and subscribing to the YouTube channels and in the Facebook group, Wholesale Hotline. Most important, we wanna know we're doing a great job for you and helping you build your business, so go give us a review on iTunes and or Spotify. So squad up and enjoy the show! Welcome to Wholesale Hotline number 112, and this is a special takeover episode. Hell yeah. The ladies are taking over. <laughs> We've got Laura Morby. We got Rahima, and at some point she'll pop on here. Um, she's getting all of her cameras set up. But guys, this is an unbelievable opportunity. Obviously, you know that Pace and Jamil are out in New York, right? Yes, yep. They're out there for a meeting. Everything. They're with A&E Meetups. right now. So okay. having a good time. There And and of course, we have Monday here. And don't forget, we also have Corbin on the special Corbin cam. There she is. <laughs> Somehow, my voice is not strong enough to wake her up. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, we're just going to do this thing. And uh, if we do have celebrations, everybody, and I do have to ring the bell, it's going to be soft here until she wakes up, and then we'll go bananas. But uh, it's pretty incredible. So. Uh, Laura, yes, it has been an absolute, the last 24 months has been the uh, like a huge whirlwind for you. Oh yeah. hundred percent moving. Yeah. TV show. Yes. Uh, flip me coming out, oh right? Oh my gosh. Yes. The everything, like how do you balance all this? And you just had this beautiful little baby here that's <laughs> smiling at me. Come on. Yeah. So how do you balance all this? How do you do all this and still, uh, maintain a great relationship with Pace, maintain a great relationship with your family, with your children, with everybody. Yeah. So um, one of the things that Pace taught me really early on is to combine activities. Okay. So, I mean, obviously I'm here with this one and I got my little one with me. So we take our kids everywhere yep. and um, for better or worse, I guess. Um, but they've been to buy appointments. They've been to all sorts of cool stuff with us. Um, one of my favorite stories is you want me to do this? this. The water bottle. Yeah. All right. Um, one of my favorite stories about Asher is when we had a Homebusters franchise, he would go with Pace to buy appointments. Mm -hmm. And on the way there, he would t explain what we're doing, what's going on, who we're about to meet. Um, and so a Asher went to a buy appointment with Pace and on the way there. And then took him into his house and it's the middle of summer, no mm -hmm. air conditioning because mm -hmm. there's no power. And Asher's just sitting there dripping sweat. And he didn't say a th one thing. He just sat there politely, listened. And the seller afterwards is like, I'm so sorry, your son's sitting here and he's sweating. And he was like, oh, it's okay. And so I think it's actually a really positive thing to include them in what we do. Sure. So they understand and uh, they won't ever be afraid to talk to anybody. Yeah, right? that's for sure. <laughs> I mean, building those skills early on. I mean, I think it's absolutely incredible. I mean, do you guys, so is it just the schedule is wide open? If you're going to go somewhere, you're going to bring the kids? Yeah. Or divide and conquer? Like, how does that work? Um, well, it depends. Usually, I mean, I usually have them, but it depends if Corbin's uh, Pace's number one fan. So, yeah. I mean, there might be another really big fan out there, but P Corbin loves him. So he'll take her with him sometimes. So. Nice. So you guys are doing this. How, how are you balancing that with the TV show? Oh, the TV show. The TV shows, like how much of that, oh how much of that is your schedule for real? Because yeah. I want everybody out there, everybody out there is like, I want to, I want to do this business yeah. and I want to be successful. And then I want to have my own TV show. I know. Let's take a look at what that really means. <laughs> Rahima's here. That's great. She's popping on. <laughs> Let's add her to the stream. Rahima, how are you? I'm so sorry, guys. I had a technical difficulty. How are you guys? It's so nice to see you. Great. Hi, Laura. Hi, Monday. Hi, Brent. You guys look so beautiful. Are you, you still too. in Vegas or are you home? No, I'm in Vegas one more night. I come oh, home tomorrow. That's what's going on. Okay. 
Awesome. It's our Vegas We're just gal. talking about the schedule for the TV show. How much oh, yeah. of the week that takes up and and what that means and, and kind of what your goal and plan and what kind of the vision of the show is. Okay. Right? So, yes. I mean, I'm on the, I'm, I'm filming eight hours a day, five days a week. But on top of that, every morning I have to go check all the projects that we have underway and then every evening I have to go and either order material that we've decided upon in that episode or make sure that it's, you know, what was supposed to get done that day is done because we hand in a house every two weeks. Yeah. So we did one month of filming and then starting in the middle of February, we handed in our first house. And every two weeks after that, we have to submit a house. Incredible. Does that put pressure on you? How do you like it? Do you like the pressure? It's nonstop, it's nonstop pressure. I mean, I'm Jamil's sister, so I know how to work under pressure. But yeah, it's nonstop. Do do you do you prefer it that way? Uh, you know, Brent. To be honest, between you, me, and and all of the wholesale hotline group here, yep. I kind of do. I like the pressure. Well, talk to me about that. Like, why? Why? Why go through all that pressure? Why keep it going? You know, does it does it just you know idle hands to do the devil's work type that's, of thing? And then that's right? It. Yeah, yeah, I mean, look, I didn't realize that that my crew that our crew could do to a, a house every two weeks. I had no idea. After the first season, now we realize that doing a house every two weeks is too easy. Right. And we buy an extra couple of houses in whichever area that we're going to be in. That way, when the film camera needs us to slow down a bit so that they can get more, more footage, we throw them on our other job. She is telling the truth. Actually, she went. They went too fast. They got mad at us. They made us tear out some of the work that they had already done. Right? Oh no! We, yeah. Because we oh, just go. We like. I, I call them. I call us like the termites of construction. We just go, 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 go. Before you know it, it's done. That's wild. Did you start off with flips, Rahima, or did you start off sourcing deals? Like, how did you become? This well-known, I mean, in in our market, I mean, everybody knows who you are. Everybody knows the product that you do. Everybody okay. copies what you do. And I say this a lot, and this is to all the incredible men out there that are building these businesses and want to do uh, flips and do the design work. I always tell them you need to have a woman design these these houses or it's just going to be a bunch of dudes having man caves all over town and the market <laughs> for those is very it's just not as big unless you have uh you make it kind of appeal to a, a broader audience so how right. do you make sure that you do that and what give us like take us back in time how did you even get going in this so jamil and i first started flipping houses we actually first started flipping apartment buildings right in calgary right so mm -hmm. We would take a building, then we would condo it so that each unit became an individual unit now. So now we can sell, instead of one building, we can sell 40 units. And then each of those units had to be uh, renovated to be sold to a retail buyer. So we would acquire the building, do the strata title to, to so that every, every one of them is, is separate, then sell them to investors and then renovate them. So we started doing the renovations and the design work really early, I'd say 15 years ago. Sure. And then we kind of carried it forward to here where we did do some apartment buildings, but we focused on single family. Got it. And you've just been, you've just been doing it over the last 15 years. Yep. Over the and, last 15 years. And how do you find your deals? Well, that's all Jamil and Kiku. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look at this shirt. Yeah. Really? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So you are, you're on the side of, you're, you're getting these deals from, uh, from wholesalers, essentially from Jamil, wh whether he's sourcing it straight to the owner or getting it from somebody else. And then you're going in and putting in the design. I mean, you're taking it from there. It's your ball run with it. That's it. That's it. I, it's my ball. I get a house, I get a purchase price. I get a comp that I'm always trying to crush. Right. I mean, Jamil and I and Laura and Pace, we, we call them fomps now. Cause they're just all false comps. Cause it's like Jamil will say, Oh, this house is going to comp out at six ninety nine, dollars Right. Uh, Laura, isn't that what, what uh, Griswold was supposed to comp out at six ninety nine? Yep. That's right. What do we sell it at? Oh my gosh. What are we at? Seven ninety nine. Yep. Seven ninety nine. In fact, our, our offer came in at eight thirty, and we said, Hey, how about you give it to us for seven ninety nine and put the other 30 in appraisal waiver. Yep. And how much are you going to net on that? 170,000. Oh, I would, I, you, you know, I'll kind of do it. We'll kind of, we'll kind of do one of these. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, 
Corbin Cam. Oh, she moved a little. She moved a little. Can you see that, Rahima? We've got a Corbin Cam. She's amazing. That is awesome. So $170,000 and yeah. you got that deal. For, was that from another, from, from a wholesale deal? Yeah, it was from a wholesale deal. Jimmo picked it up at 500K or Keegley picked it up at 500K. We put in what we had to put in. And that was a, a, actually an interesting one because we didn't have, it was an HOA house. It's in a gated community. So nowhere to do an extension, nowhere to do an addition. So we can't add any square footage. Right. That means we're kind of stuck with that comp. But it had these crazy 25 foot ceilings when you walk in the front door. So we built a mezzanine. We gave you a 10 foot ceiling downstairs and we still yep. had enough room to give you another 10 foot ceiling upstairs. And we added 250 square feet without a single addition or in a single extension. How do you learn this? You just, I, I mean, you just kind of walk in and assess your, assess your situation and say, what can we do here to make this work, to make us make money? And, and I think this whole season that we're working on now is a lot of bringing the outside inside and, you know, taking, what a builder neglected to give you yep. and adding it under roof. Right. Got it. But I mean, when you started out, did you have a mentor? Did you have guidance? Did you? Oh, heck no. I'm all, I'm all trial and error. I made all the mistakes. So, I mean, guys, it's, it's great because you can learn from making my mis that where I've already made the mistake. You don't have to make it right. You can be like, Hey, what, what should we do here? You don't have to make the same error that we have already made and learned from. So let me ask you this. You don't have Pace. You don't have Jamil. You have to go out there. You got to find deals. How, what would you guys do if you were like, okay, listen, I'm going to cut all this off and I'm going to just go out there and I'm going to find these opportunities myself. Do? Yeah. Oh my gosh, what I already do. Well, Rahima and I are both realtors. If anybody doesn't know, Rahima is actually my broker, which is All right. awesome. So Rahima is my boss, but I love Rahima. Lord so the boss. yeah. So I would 100% utilize Keegley just because mm -hmm. they're awesome and okay. it's easy and they have a ton of deals. And I would go and just start comping their their lists and make a relationship with one of their dispo guys. Um, which the one that's assigned to me is Ronald Carter. He's amazing. If mm -hmm. anyone knows him and that way I'm like $0 out of pocket. I'm not having to cold call. I'm not having to build a team. I don't have an acquisitions department. I've got none of that. And all it is, is my time. Mm -hmm. And since we're realtors, we're great compers. And so I would just start trying to find a deal for myself and then go get hard money and get to it, get cooking on a couple flips for myself. What if you couldn't use Keegley? What if I couldn't use Keegley? Keegley just all of a sudden, poof, it's gone. It never existed. You're just out there. You're starting brand new. Yeah. You're like, you know what I mean? And yeah. you, but you want to do flips. Yeah. You, you, you're, you're able to kind of put it together creatively. Like you, you understand what you want to, uh, like design wise, what you want to do. How would you find those deals? Get on the phones. That's, <laughs> that's what I, that's what I did a long time ago. I actually yeah. worked for Kyle Wyloge and I yeah. did short sales for him and I called on the NOD list and I love Kyle. Kyle's ever watches this. He probably would never, but if he did, I, I love you. And he really gave me a good kick in the pants. Um, he just, he was like, here's the NOD list. I'm like, what the hell is the NOD the list? Thing, yeah. And he was like, he's like, just get on, like, start calling. And I'm like, we'll okay. what the NOD list yeah, is. Yeah. So it's a notice of default list. So it means that someone's hit 90 days late on their mortgage, but I had no idea. Free foreclosures, guys. Yeah. Yep. So, and those you can get free from the title company or you can get them other places. So we got ours from the our preferred title company and um, I just called it every morning and just being consistent. And um, I didn't even use a CRM at that time. No. I was just, you know, to keep the cost low, just Matt, get on the phone. my CRM, please? I'm going to show you the, the CRM I had for the first million oh, let me bucks. See it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you my CRM. It's good. How would you go about it, Rahima? How would you, you know, go and find I, deals before I, Keegley was Keegley? You know what I mean? I, well, I think, I think uh, what Jamil and I used to love to do, and I'll, and I'll give you an example. We were in Canada, in Calgary. I had, a, I had my daughter, she was probably eight months or nine months old. Jamil and I would drive around city, um, in the city where houses had been built on infills. So it was one house, but that, that lot could be split into two. So that house would be torn down, you'd split the lot into two, you'd build two houses, those infill houses. Yep. And we would go in and we would knock on the door. We'd see somebody gardening and we'd say, hey, we're a new family. We're looking for a house. Are you thinking about selling? Mm -hmm. And and we would say, and then, you know, they'd be like, you know, yeah, we've been thinking about downsizing. Would you accept this as an offer? And they'd say, okay. 
and we would basically, Jimmy would have contracts in the back of the car and say, you know what, we'll write the contract up right now. And in Canada, you do everything through a lawyer. So we'll, sure. we'll open up escrow at a lawyer's office and we'll deposit $10,000 and we have a deal, handshake deal, and we'd write a contract up. So I feel like that was a precursor to driving for dollars. Yes. Right. So I feel like I would be, I would be in Pace's car and I'd be driving for dollars. Oh yeah. I mean, listen, it all starts with how you go out and you find the ugliest houses that you can. And then you start having a conversation with that property owner yep. and you find out the condition of the property, their timeline to sell their motivation and their price. You don't just go there and, and like I interrogate them. You go there as a human being, as a neighbor and say, Hey, listen, we want to buy in this area. Can we talk to you about it? Is and there look, any got, opportunity here? You've got right? Laura standing in your arms with a baby. Right. Yeah. Could you say no to no. a woman with a baby? No, exactly. I mean, Jamil, once Jamil figured out nobody ever said no to a woman and a baby, my kid and, my, and me were out every weekend. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I and love if you it. don't have a baby, a dog works great. Too. People <laughs> will never oh, not yeah. answer their People door for a dog. This is, this is my CRM for the first million bucks. I love it. This is, this is one that. through 31. Every day of the month, I would pull it out. What's today? The fourth. It was the fourth. Boom. I pull it out. These are my leads that I have to talk to today. And then I put them back in based on the conversations that I had. And I would, li I, I literally just used one of these yeah. until I created, can you give me the lead uh, sheet? And, and you guys can download this at TTP Insider if you want it. But we give these to our students and it's just like a pad of paper with all these. Oh, let's get right? the link in, in the chat. Yeah. TTP Insider. TTP Insider.com. And this just keeps you organized. I mean, you're not going to go, Raheem is not going to walk down the street with this, you know, and do this. This is more over the phone, yeah. right? right? But it helps you really understand uh, who you're working with and what's going on, the condition, timeline, motivation, price. And just remember, listen. A lead is somebody that's going to sell their house. They're going to sell. They're going to sign a contract with somebody. They're going to sign an agreement with somebody, mm -hmm. right? That is a lead. Mm -hmm. Everything else, guys, get rid of them. Everything else, if they're, if they're just wanting you to comp the property or they're not really serious or, you know, they're, they're not, they're, their timeline is really far out, you either try to shorten that timeline or move on. Yeah. You got to move on, yeah. right? Yeah, time is I'm, money. You don't want to waste this. You don't want to waste a second if you don't think it's going to get, if it's going to go somewhere. Absolutely. That's right. This that's is right. a great question for oh, you. Rahima. Yeah. This gonna... is something that's so hard for people to do if you're not in construction. Mm -hmm. So you and I both have been. So let's see, what is your easy button for estimating rehab costs? It's, it's tougher right now, Steve, um, mainly because the cost of materials is going up so high, but a, like a, a rule of thumb used to be $25 a square foot to do a rehab. Right. It was a thousand. It was a thousand square feet. You you were doing. You're going to use twenty five grand to renovate that house. So for every thousand square feet, you were going to use twenty five grand. Right. Now that would give you some money towards big ticket items like roofs and windows and HVACs. It wouldn't cover it all. So you would have to say, okay, this is a pretty good house. It's two thousand square feet. I think it's going to run me fifty grand. Out of that, I I might be able to etch out my windows, but I'm not going to have enough to do my roof and my HVAC if that property needs it. I'm yep. going to need another 15 grand. So $65,000 on a two, on a 2000 square foot house. What do you think it's gone up to now, Rahima? Closer, now to, across. closer to 35 ish. Yeah. Can I, can I put something on the screen? Can we put yeah. the, the, I'm going to put something on the screen that I um, kind of run my numbers by, and yeah. then you can just pick it apart and look at it. But I basically look at the three stages, right? Just a quick little, you need to go in, do some cosmetic. The other one's like, okay, it needs some work. And then the last one's like, oh my gosh, this is yeah. like bananas. So yep, this yep. is, th this is pretty close to where you were at for the yeah. wow. This is bad at $30 a square foot. Yeah. Right. Um, and that's, that's what I look at. I just look at the size of the house, easy stuff needs work. And wow, this is bad. Um, that's, you know, we just increased this 10 grand this year. Rahima. Yeah. yeah. Um, what's your thoughts there? No, How that makes look? sense. That's like bang on. That's really what it is. Yeah. I mean, then if you're going to do things like what we do, where we're bringing in the inside under roof into the outside or rather the outside under roof into the inside and we're adding that square footage. Well, now you're adding square footage. So, um, we did a house last season on the show where we just changed the, the position of the front door. That's all we did. We yep. changed it from a side front door. We pushed out the front of the house. And that little bit of square foot um, cost us, I don't know, three grand to do because there was already a concrete pad there. 
we right. all we had to do was kind of reframe and, and put them some roofing material. But it was forty thousand dollars in um our, in ROI because we added square footage. So you have to look for these hacks, right? Where mm -hmm. can you find a place where you can bring a, a like a small vestibule under roof and add some square footage? Because square footage prices have never been like this. I don't ever re recall three hundred, four hundred, five hundred dollars a square foot. In, in your I, I, I thought the market would break. I honestly thought it would break at two hundred dollars a square foot. Right. I was like, this is crazy. Now it's but it's five hundred dollars a square foot. I mean, I mean it is banana. Laura, I mean, Laura and I just listed a house in Maryville. What is that house per square foot? Let's see. It was what did we say it was thirteen ninety square feet? Mm -hmm. Is that what we came up with? Over fifteen, what was it, honey? I think it's it's do you remember? Let me pull it up real quick. Well, you're pulling that up, Jose. Yes, this is just for the median price. This isn't this isn't super luxury. This isn't something that you're going to be putting in a you know a hundred hundred fifty thousand dollar kitchen into this type of thing. This is for the bread and butter fix and flip properties. Now, obviously, if you're in higher end markets, you're going to have to adjust that. You're going to have to adjust that probably by 50k each one, um, just just to make sure that you have enough budget in there for your estimates but it's so it's i mean are you guys adjusting your guys's offers on these things because you know the potential mm -hmm. is it keeps creeping up like when you're comping these mm -hmm. what 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 are you what are you backing out of arv that's oh gonna be gosh. a good one well we're i mean a lot of these are coming from keegley is that right for yeah. yeah. i mean they start out yeah. with like from keegley they the arv starts out at a keegley arv because they gave it's us the set. house, so they're going right. to be a little bit conservative, but we're adding square footage. We're, you know, we, we're redoing a whole bunch of things. We don't look like anything like the comp that they gave us. Yeah. So we're, we're definitely pushing the envelope. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And this is, I mean, adding, adding square footage and doing stuff like that. I mean, that's definitely not what you'd want to do for your first flip. Um, maybe so. not even your first 10 flips. Maybe, yeah. Not, yeah. maybe not even your first 10 flips. Your first 10 that's flips. That's great advice. You know, bread and butter all day long till you're starting to, and then ask yourself, okay, if 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 I had the money, what could I have done differently in this house? If I right. could have, if I had the guy who could help me frame this in, or if I had what I needed to do for this one, what would I have done differently? Sometimes it'll be nothing, and sometimes it'll be like, oh, I could have, I could have done this, or I could have pushed in this Arizona room and leveled out my floor and added that square footage, and you know, figured out how to duck this and and added another 300 square feet. Yeah. Got it. And listen, guys, everybody that is here just starting out, focus on finding the deals, focus on wholesaling, get that process down. Yes. I am telling you, your first 12 months should be focused on building the systems and the machine to finding discounted properties. And that is the foundation of your real estate business. Everything else gets built on top of that, right? Absolutely. So you want to you want to make sure that you focus on that because if you start cherry picking, then all of a sudden you're that learning curve of flipping your first house. That's like three, four, five months before you actually get paid on it. Yep. And you're going to go through a lot of headache and a lot of heartache yep. on your first few flips, just picking out the right contractors or subcontractors or paint colors or material that you want to use and fixtures and appliances and all those things. And totally. you know what? I would always suggest if you're a wholesaler, when you're wholesaling, I want you to follow the property, you know, follow yes. the property. When that property goes up for sale, look at the pictures on the MLS. What did they do? Would you have done the same? Would you have done it differently? How did they, how did they end up? What did they finish with? And if you have yep. a relationship with your buyer, call them and ask him, Hey, how much was your, how much was your rental? And kind of yep. get an idea of what it is because a lot of times people think, Oh, I left all that money on the table by wholesaling this, but maybe you didn't. No, maybe, yeah. maybe all that you left on the table was a headache. Yes. Uh, I've worked with a couple of the biggest uh, uh, flippers here in town. Like they do two, 300. Mm -hmm. They average 17 K a deal. Yeah. $17,000 yeah. yeah. a deal. And that's and just I'm it. averaging when have, 70. Uh, when you yeah, have that no, huge, like, when you have that huge there, volume yeah. of, of deals that are being done, if those that big volume of, there's no way you're going to be able to keep your labor and your materials, your actually your labor under under a certain amount because l when you have a bunch of people on the job at the same time, it's not as efficient than when you have one or two trades at the job at the same time. Yep. Well, let, and when let you're making you, volume, you have no choice. Right. Let me ask you this then: How do you make sure that you keep your crews busy 
enough to where they don't leave you and you got to find somebody else. Because, listen, that's a, that is a whole bunch of management going on there. That picking the right contractors will make or break everything, right? Yep. Right. So how do you how do you make sure that you you pick the right the right people and and keep them busy enough to where they're ready to work on all of your deals? Because that, that was always what I yep. found real difficult. I've done about a hundred flips in my yep. life, mm -hmm. and it was always like, oh my gosh. Uh, where is he? Where'd he go? It's been like 30 days since our last flip and my contractor's now gone. gone. Yeah. Oh, we're too busy. We're doing this. Here's my cousin. He does some stuff. And the cousin comes over. He's just getting started and he's not good at all. Right. right. So, right. Yep. Every time. So, I mean, how do you, how do you keep him busy, Rahima? It's, it's tough to say I'm a wholesaler and I also do flips because they're two different hats. You know, yep. it really is. You're either a full-time wholesaler or you're a full-time flipper. And I think when you're trying to separate those two things, it gets tricky. I mean, yep. look, I'm not saying that if you got the juiciest deal on your desk and you're like, I see nothing but potential here and I can make this happen, that you don't do it. Do it. Have fun. Do it. But it's yep. difficult to say, I'm going to wholesale five and flip five. That's that's tough because it is it is a full time running of you know making sure that everybody that's supposed to show up showed up and that yep. no, and that. And that process is going smoothly on every single one of those flips yeah well you put jose uh jimenez on here that is amazing you read this oh no it took a massive action says, no oh, yeah. it took massive action on that strategy pace and laura taught on how to get a deal in two hours i just dispoed four deals in Woo! a week Hell yeah. jose you better put how much you made on there buddy that's yeah, amazing good job good job jose are we camp Oh, she's good. Okay. <laughs> Still out. I love it. She's on a she's on a different level right now. I love it. Wait, let me see. I want to sleep like that. Yep. There we go. Oh, she's sleeping too? Oh, oh no. She's up there. By the way, Laura is dressed as me. She's wearing the Jordan. She's got the black jeans and she's got the TTP shirt. And Look I at got that. the hair. Look at this. I love it. I want I want one of those uniforms. Send one over. You got it. Done. <laughs> that is awesome. Um, that's that's a great question from Brittany there. Rahima, why did you choose to go into flipping and not wholesaling? Because my brother's the wholesaler. Okay. So divide and conquer. Divide and conquer. Yeah. One of us had to do it. I think that's such a smart, you know, that, I mean, that that is what it is. If you focus on what you're great at, then you can really make a difference because you're not scattered all over the place. Right. Like a, a lot of people talk about like, a time being the most valuable asset. It's attention. It's the attention you put to the things in yep. your life. Yeah. Like you could sit, I'm spending family time. Well, if I'm not watching my kids and I'm like on my phone, that's not family time. Where's the attention at? So when you're right. looking at, okay, well, I'm going to put my attention into doing the fix and flip that yep. frees Jamil up to go and find all the deals. Yep. And he puts his attention into that. It's, it's fantastic. Yep. I love it. Yep. I love that we, and I think, you know, Laura being um, the, the retail dispositions and and Pace focusing more on the wholesale dispositions works perfect. Yep. Yep. It's awesome. So you're running the you're running the crews, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Yep. You're the ones meeting with them, calling them. Like, what is that? What does your day look like? Like, are you just oh, on the phone? My day is not. It, it starts at four a.m. and then it, I'm basically on the phone. I mean. It starts at 4 a.m. I'm out of the house by 5.15. I check out all the houses, and then I'm on set starting generally 7.45, 8 o'clock. Then they usually keep me till 3 or 4 p.m. But through that, I have to, you know, text, make sure that the, the guy who's supposed to show up to do the tile has the tile ordered. I've already ordered it for him. He's got the, everything he needs to get going. He knows where he has to be tomorrow. So it's like constant juggling between what's going on on the set and what's going on in reality of the houses. Who made that jacket? I don't know. <laughs> I'll have to take it off to check. You just wanted to know that. That's great. Um, do you have your, all right, John, I'm going to answer. It's John's question because he's posted it a thousand times here. So I'll get you. Uh, AmericanTracers.com is a great resource for the tough one. Also, if you can't do that, get somebody on Upwork or Fiverr that has a TLO account. And uh, TLO is is TransUnion's uh, data um, uh, part of their company. So they have everything. So there you go, John. You're, you're, uh, 
your persistence has paid off. <laughs> yeah. Or another thing that I like to do, I mean, us us gals are pretty good at this, but um, look for them on social media. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Love so it. that's another good good thing to do is look up for them on social media. Or if there's a secondary property owner on that, you can do that. Um, you could even contact the realtor that sold them the house originally. That's a good way, way to do it Love too. It. So there's all sorts of ways you can find a hard to find a seller. So when you're reaching out to them, mm -hmm. how do you know, how do you filter out if this is the right one? Because mm -hmm. like if you put in my name, there's 15 of them or something. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, a few of you, yeah. yeah. Um, so just hit them all up. Sometimes you got it, but actually yeah. some of the software that you use will actually pull up um, some p potential locations. So like where yeah. they lived. And that so if that pops up, address, with, yeah. yeah, then you know, you got the right one. You can get software that scrapes Facebook. Um, or oh, how do you, oh, on Facebook? You, yeah. Yeah. Um, I usually, or Instagram or whatever. Yeah. I usually look for somebody, I mean, cause you know where they live. Yeah. So like, say I'm trying to find someone who lives in Chandler, Arizona, then I'll type in their name, look for a Chandler, Chandler. and yeah. then I'll just start, you know, cruising through. And like a lot of people do own a property with a spouse or significant others. Mm -hmm. So then you can see like, Hey, do they have a relationship with that person? Are they talking about this person? It's like looking into so, a mirror. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are like <laughs> private eyes. Look yeah. at this. You guys are like your private eyes. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you can all, yeah, if you really want to get to it, yeah, talk to a private investigator. No, I mean, you guys are like private eyes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I Check out the relationship, ask about the I love it. That's it. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Camp outside the door and see if you can take pictures. Yeah. Pace and I, he'll, because like he, he didn't do like this side of real estate with me in the originally, because right. I've been doing this since 2009 mm -hmm. and he did it on his own. We didn't come together and start working together until 2016. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> he like, we like, I always work for other investors. And then finally he was like, yeah, I finally got you on my team. Like, this is great. But before <laughs> when I would do this for other people that I worked for, when I started doing it for him, he's like, you're a creep. And I'm like, Look, I like oh, found, I'll find him. Him. Yeah. Yeah, I oh, found yeah. him and we, we bought the house. Like, so being a creep pays off. So. That's awesome. <laughs> Anthony asks, hey, I have a pre-foreclosure lead I'm working on. One person wants to sell, but the ex-wife wants it to go to foreclosure. Any suggestions on how to handle this? Well, Anthony, there should be very clear lines in the divorce decree if mm -hmm. it is truly an ex-wife mm -hmm. who gets that property. Yeah. So that might just be something that he's not aware of. Um, if he owns it he should be able to, to, um, to sell it. Yeah. So I, what I would do is I would, oh, I would put it under contract. I would open up escrow and I'd let title clean it up. Yeah. hundred percent. And I used yeah. to do this a lot with short sales because a lot of properties that went up for foreclosure are due to mm -hmm. some sort of pain. And a lot of times that is like a relationship splitting up. Um, but sometimes too, it, you're kind of being fed the information filtered through the spouse that you're talking to. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times it helps to say, Hey, can I get their phone number as well? Um, if it's not a violent situation, they usually have their phone number still. Um, but I have negotiated, you know, something with domestic violence as well, which that's, you know, takes a little bit extra, yeah. you know, padding to do, but if they're in foreclosure and somehow their name is still tied to that mortgage, which usually is, um, because they're not like, even if the divorce decree took them off the deed, they're they're not refining the loan and then getting off the loan. So a lot of times all it takes is for you to actually make some sort of relationship That's with it. that other spouse to see that you're not like you you have no like the spouse that they don't like anymore. You're you're not like exclusively work exclusively working for them. You're trying to help them, which includes this now other person and so if you say hey like this is going to affect your credit this is going to affect you being able to buy a house again yourself um let me help you out like i'm not like i just met him through cold calling or i met him through door knocking like i want to help you too so a lot of times it just takes um reaching out to them yourself as well we just made a hundred and sixty thousand i'll have to check with jeremy on the exact numbers uh went through divorce mm -hmm. They were both on the loan. Yep. She had six months to refi the house or sell it yep. to get him off the loan. Uh -huh. That was seven years ago. Oh, my gosh. She, she has not made a single payment. <laughs> oh, I believe it. Oh, she just so him. he went to the courts, said this is what's happening. Two years in the courts, they go, yeah, the property's yours. Now you can sell it. He's like, give me 65000 in Casa Grande and it's yours. Oh, Boom. my gosh. Sold it for two twenty. Oh, my gosh. Like that. 
See, yeah. and this is a thing too. Like this is what he just said. Take that story and use that as your own. Yeah. So just say, hey, at my like the guy that I, I've been working with, my investor, mm -hmm. Brent, yep. this is what happened. So use that exact story for a divorce situation to kind of like help push people along. Yep. Um, so I always love using, I mean, we are all in sales and we all have these crazy stories that will help push somebody off the fence or help you get a deal. Utilize Brent's story, like right now, everyone, no matter where you are in the country to help these divorce situations and help get it done. Cause I mean, how long till he went to court? Seven years. Seven years. Yeah, so and for it took him two years in court. Seven years. This his ex wife wasn't making payments. We've been so that following means, up for three years. That's insane. So his <laughs> his credit is getting dinged every month. Well, it's, he's paying it. Oh, no, he's he paid, paying. The oh, mortgage. that's even worse. He My paid the gosh. mortgage for seven years. Okay, so yeah, um, yeah, there are solutions out there, and that's what we're here <laughs> for. So you know, utilize Brent's story yeah. to like help push some people off the fence and get some deals done. That's, That's crazy. Pace and Jamil are watching us at dinner. Hope your guys' meeting went awesome. Can't wait to hear about it next week. Absolutely phenomenal. And I think they got a meetup that they're doing. Oh, yeah, they right? are. Yes, yes. So they're going to be doing a meetup, guys. Check out their Instagram so that if you are in the New Jersey, New York area, uh, go see them. Yeah. See them live. It's worth it. Ma uh, uh, Pace does black magic. He'll show you. <laughs> he, does, uh, he does magic. Uh, and uh, it's really, it'll blow your mind. So there you go. He blows my mind, but I don't know if that is real magic. <laughs> I got to shout out to magic, magic. Moon. What you talking about. I don't know. <laughs> um, there was a good question in there that was about Rahima, where you find your products. And if you use Home Depot Pro accounts, oh, yeah. this is a great way for people to understand like how you sure. get a pro account. I know, but will you share with people? Yeah, like, for, absolutely. So, first, I'm going to send a shout out to Sasha Moon because that's amazing. Good on you. That's just phenomenal. So proud of you. So proud of you. Keep it going. Keep it going. Um, yeah. Do we, so do I buy stuff from Home Depot? I do. And this is what I buy. I buy lumber, sheetrock, grout, thin set, things like that. I don't buy much of the design, any of the design stuff from Home Depot, but I definitely buy that. And when you go in there and you open up a pro account, it's not just a pro account. It's almost like you're opening up. You have to go in and talk to the manager and you say, look, I want to, I'm going to be flipping a house or I'm going to be doing a project. And if you're going to spend over $1,500, they automatically give you a 7 to 10% discount. Mm -hmm. And that's only if you go and talk to them. So it's set up under your pro account, and then you're getting an extra 7 to 10% off all of those articles. So I also buy kitchen cabinets and vanities from Home Depot because I can take a big box item and then make it our own, you know, paint, hardware, different hinges, and you it looks like a custom kitchen using a Home Depot kitchen. But yeah. definitely you want to use Home Depot and definitely you want to get on their pro. Um, another place I go and I think it's national is Floor and Decor. Mm -hmm. And I make friends with the vendors. So I'll show I'll send you um, I'll show you a, or I'll read you a text message that I just got from the vendor at Floor and Decor. And it's like, hey, we just got this material. It's fantastic. It's a dollar ninety nine a square foot. And it's, you know, what you always use and what you're normally paying two fifty for. How many yeah. square feet do you need? You know, what can I put away for you? So you, if you make these relationships with your vendors, and I'm always talking about that, know your vendor, make friends with your vendor. I know when my, I know when Edward's birthday is. I know when his kids' birthdays are. I know all that stuff about Edward. And I utilize our, you know, I use our friendship uh, every day. We, we're, we're constantly talking. So you become friends with them. Because you're talking to them every day. So it, either you're going to talk to them like they're just a, a salesperson or you're going to bring them into your circle and make them your friend. And they're that's part of your team. They're part, part of, of your team. They're that's part of my it. team. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and and they, they will hook you up forever. People that are in the in those, in those that business stay in it forever. Yeah. Yep. And all of a sudden they're telling you new things that are coming out and what, yep. they're, you know, what, what the, the, their suggestions are and when the discounts are going to come and when to buy and when not to buy. Like if you're going to get into the business of flipping full time, you need to have all these people on your team. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, that's huge. And you absolutely. do that at Floor and Decor? I do. I have a, I have a, a lot of people at Floor and Decor. Um, I usually only utilize two or three Home Depots. I don't go all over town so they know me. You know, so if I'm like, hey, this isn't working right or this, I got a problem with this. They're like, just bring it back or forget about it. Don't even bring it back. Throw it out. I'll give you a new one. Because mm -hmm. they know you. You know, they know you're always there. They're just, they'll write it off and give you something and give you a new one. And then where do I buy all my cabinet poles, lights, 
fans, all that stuff, Amazon. I buy it all from Amazon. And then I send the things to the, so I send all the plumbing faucets to the plumber's address. And I send all the electrical things to the electrician's address. And now they have the material sat, sitting in front of their house and they put it in their truck and go. Mm -hmm. It's not all coming to my house. It's coming yeah, to the individual so, trades. Yeah. Uh, skip a step, right? There's yeah, efficiency absolutely. there. Absolutely. Yeah. There's a ton of efficiency. I'm sure they love it. But you, you send it like to their office or their house? I send it to their house. Yeah. And then I send <laughs> a picture of it. And then I send a picture of it to their wife and I That's say, hey, right. I just sent this to your house. Let you know, let Juan or let Miguel know that this is at the house. They need to take this to this house. And I always communicate with the wife. Always. Yep. And always you don't want to send it to the property address because it can get stolen. It'll get stolen. Yep. Yeah. And having a warehouse, I mean, some people who are going to be doing flips like we are, um, you know, even a couple down years down the road, you might think, yeah, I'll get a warehouse. But if you're in a city like Phoenix, you're having someone who's coming and having to drop off a hot water heater, who's coming up and picking mm -hmm. up flooring. And then you're constantly having to arrange and rearrange to move things out of the way. What Rahima just said is a cheat code. Definitely pay attention to that. Just send it to whoever you have working, doing, if someone's doing flooring, they can go pick it up from floor and decor, but like these plumbing fixtures, electric supplies. Yeah. Send it to your electrician's house because yep. that's where they're getting up in the morning and they're yep. taking off to the job site. And I'll, and I'll tell you one thing, if you send your floor guy to floor and decor, he's going to waste two and a half hours picking up that material. hundred percent. I'll, I'll, I'll order all the floor and all the tile in one delivery. I'll pay the $125 delivery charge and I have it delivered right on site. And now there's no, I, I spent three hours at floor and decor or they gave me the wrong stuff or they didn't put this in the order. None of that happens. It's all, it's all on two pallets on the driveway. Now you guys sort it out. Incredible. Incredible. And are you, how far is it? You close on that house and then you're ordering stuff. Like, is it the next day? Are you ordering it when you're in escrow to close it? No, I, I always walk the property first and I walk it first by myself. And then, you know, with Abel in about a half an hour after that. And then I kind of go over, hey, I like this about this or I think we should change this. And then I kind of talk over our ideas and what's our plan here? Can we bring this under roof? What can we do with this one? And then once we figure all that, then I say, okay let's get going. Let's start framing. Let's start, do our concrete work. Do we have to move any plumbing around? I don't want to order the material until just before I'm going to use it, utilize it because otherwise things get stolen. They get lost. They get misplaced. Yeah. I, I kind of move in, in, in fixtures and very often because I have a good relationship with my vendor, I can just call him and say, Edward, this is the job name. Send over 300 square feet of this skew or send on and send over the 300 square feet of this skew and send over 2000 square feet of this skew, put it on a delivery pallet and send it over. This is the address. I don't now, even have to go down there. It's all on telephone. But Rahima, uh, supply chain is gross right now. And there's no way that you could do it in a timely manner. And everything just goes as smooth as it does. Right. <laughs> so I, I won't ever buy something that's not there. So if I have to change my floor, I'll change it. That's what I was just going to say. Don't get emotionally attached to like, if you're doing no. a flip and you're like, I just, I have to have this floor. I have to have this backsplash. You have no. to be okay with supply chain problems being like, you know what? I'm going to do a different appliance package this time. I'm going to take what I can get. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Just take what you can get. I never think about it. If they say to me, oh, it's in the port. It'll be here in two weeks. Well, that's two weeks too late. What's, yep. What do you got right now? I need 2000 square feet of something you have in stock. Yeah. And that's the thing is like, if, if we're talking, you know, moving from wholesale to flipping, you really have to be cognizant of your timelines because that can actually like, you could kill Pressure. it. It'll yeah. You could you. stick to yep. your budget. You could put out a beautiful product. You could sell it for more than you list it for. But if you took too long, you totally ate up all of your profit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Time is, is everything with flipping. time is everything. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, and this is an interesting question um, right there. Just Anna set it up there. It said, uh, what about permits? Do you, do you avoid properties that you need a lot of permitting because yes. it's just, a, it's just clogging up the whole system? Absolutely. The last right? three houses on this season are going to require a permit. So I'll tell you guys, I'll, t I'll tell you guys a cheat on something that we did. We had to do last season is we didn't always have time. So the house is finished now. And now we're going back to the city and saying, okay, forgive me. I didn't pull the permit. Come back now and and you know check everything over and give me my permit after the fact, because permits will slow you down three months, six months, even a year. Especially yeah. now with 
with COVID, they, they, all the cities haven't gone back to work. So a lot of them are still at home. Right. It's just not as efficient as it used to be. You used to be able to walk in and get your permit and walk out. And now it's like get, make an appointment and then send it over through email. And then it'll just be in some space in a cloud. And Forever. you're hoping and praying every day that this comes through. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have a, the, the guy, my, my personal trainer at the gym has been trying to put a patio on his, on the back of his house for six months, a patio. No, it's crazy. What are we, what are we talking about here? It's like crazy. It's not, he's not adding square foot. He's not doing anything. It's, it's wild. So what happens if you go back and they, then they go, okay, we're going to get the permit and then they check it out. Is there anything that they can do after the fact? They, well, they charge you a fine and I, the fine is usually a few hundred dollars. Okay. And then they go back and they, they might say to you, well, you know, open up this drywall because we want to see the framing. But what we do is we'll take pictures of yeah. everything along the way. Then we'll say, okay, hang on. I'm, I'm happy to open up the drywall, but here are all the pictures of where we framed. So you can see what, exactly what I use and you can see the distance that we, which with which we framed at. Um, here's the, the plumbing before we poured the, the concrete. So you can see where the plumbing's at. This is the day, this is the concrete pour day. We're we're documenting every single thing we did via pictures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And usually that that'll, you know, that's sufficient for the inspector. But sometimes they might say, well, open up this square of of uh, drywall so we can make sure and we understand that we'll open it up and we're we're very like apologetic the entire time look we're sorry we're sorry we're sorry we just we just couldn't wait we had to get it done and and generally they'll let us go they'll well, make they, it open a few recepts to check the electrical but otherwise they don't want really they don't want a bunch of half done houses no, no. they don't no, want a bunch of vacant it. houses yeah. they don't want to do that type of thing and that's, they, that's really it Brett. you hit the nail on the head yeah. they don't want a bunch of half done houses nope. they don't want a bunch of vacant houses because that's a whole nother issue mm -hmm. that's it yeah i love it so i think this this is a good question for both of you guys so the minimum amount of profit you want to make on a deal, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. This varies all over the country. Everybody runs their numbers and they, some of them say, you know, I need the, the buyers of my area need a minimum of 30% return <laughs> on, you know, on their deals. And then some say, well, we sell, we, we just sell any house for retail in San Diego and people go bananas and they add to it, and make a bunch of money. Yeah. So, what is your guys' strategy when you're looking at a specific deal? Is there a certain percentage that you build in for the profits? Yeah. So we won't touch anything that isn't at least 10% right. return right. on our acquisition yep. price. Yep. Um, but if it's more, obviously, you know, it's better. But, you know, why even touch it? Right. Yeah. Right. Well, well, you know, Brett, I'll tell you what happened. You, you, hit, on, you hit this really um, early on and you said sometimes you just need to keep the crews busy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So sometimes we'll just take on a job that's close to the job we're finishing so that everything's sort of there. They're there. And we say, hey, we just picked one up. Go ahead and do the same thing over there. And we know that it's not going to be as um, profitable as the one we're working on right now. We know that. Abel and I know that. But we'll take it on to keep them busy. So if we're going to make something, we make something. But losing your crew that has been with you for a long time, because as much as they love you, as loyal as they are to you, they, they have to eat. You know, they have yep. to pay their mortgages. They have their bills to pay. So sometimes we'll take on a job just for the sake of taking on a job. And we throw our hands up in the air and we say, okay, we made 20K. Hey, okay, we're good. We're good. We made 20K. We're good. Let's right. go. Well, the other benefit there is if you're doing a couple different properties in the same neighborhood, mm -hmm. do you guys put out signs like saying we buy houses or your your the name of your company or maybe not with the TV show, but just in general, just so that the neighbors are like, well, these guys are doing an amazing job here. I'm going to sell this property that I just, you know, inherited or yeah. my rental property. Maybe they want to give me an offer. Yeah. Does that ever happen? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jamil and I used to put up bandit signs on, on all the projects that we were working on and then yep. we would get the call. He would field the calls for those. Sometimes I can work in your uh, disservice too. So like we just, Pace and I, well, I got a call from um, one of our flips our our roofer backed into the neighbor's block wall, oh, gave yeah. him his word that he'd fix it. And that was like three months ago. This is not Rahima's roofer. This is ours. I'm sorry. I'm not going to throw Rahim under the bus. This is 100 percent us. So um, our project manager knew about it, but it wasn't ever done. 
but I'm so used to being on the phone with people that I actually talked him into potentially selling me two of his properties, the house next door and another one. And I was like, I was like, see, this is why, you know, like sometimes it does, it, it works not in your favor. So Rahim is right. If you are going to put out bandit signs, like you should just like, don't like put them in the yard of the house you're fixing yes. and flipping. Just maybe say, hey, we buy houses cash and a, right. and a phone number, maybe a Google voice number or something you can track. Um, just because you never know if you have a neighbor or one of your guys did something stupid, like, you know, put his lunch trash in the neighbor's garbage or something and really tick somebody off. And oh, you know, you know, that's interesting that you say that because I generally introduce my, myself to every one of the neighbors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On the first couple of days, I'll bring donuts. Then I'll say, hey, you know, we're working in that. We're working in your in this neighborhood. We're we're right here. We're going to clean up this house. You're going to go to sleep one day. You're going to wake up with more money in your house than you knew was there because we're going <laughs> to. We're just going to crush it when we go right. to school. Yeah. And so everybody's excited. Everybody's happy. I, you know, we have donuts together. And people ask me, why do you do that? And I say, because the last thing you want to do is ever upset anybody where you're doing a job. Yep. You yeah. want to keep everybody happy. If it's not if it's not just for future business, it's so that they're not, you know, they're not calling the cops. They're not calling the city. They're not calling everybody on you every day to make your job miserable. They're not stealing your water to fill their pool. You know, they're... They're looking at you respectfully and you're being respectful to them. And you'd be surprised how far a box of $15 donuts goes. Yeah. We've even like offered to like clean up people's yards. Like, yeah. hey, we've got our landscaper here. He wants to take care of your weeds, you know, yeah. um, just something to keep people happy because you really don't. You don't want to take off the neighbors. You don't they take can, off the neighbors. I mean, not like just for like what I do with my re realtor license. Like when you go to resell the house, like you got a mad neighbor and they can scare off potential buyers once you're done. And that stinks. Or, yeah. you know, even worse, they could, you know, call the city and have them shut you down. Yeah. And then you add more time to your. Yeah, because honestly, if you're moving a reset, you need a permit. I mean, mm -hmm. who's going to get a permit to move a reset? But if the city wants to shut you down, they will They'll shut you down. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And just just to underline this, guys, just so that you caught that for all of us wholesalers, all of us people going out there grinding, having these conversations, negotiating with these property owners, there are times when cash buyers are will sell. Like we did, like you were saying, we made twenty grand on this, we moved on. That could have been a four hundred thousand dollar house. That could be a five percent return. On that money but it's still you made money you kept the cruise going mm -hmm. and you kept things moving mm -hmm. so all these people that think i'm crazy by uh by saying that most investors want to make a minimum 10 percent mm -hmm. um it even goes up from there mm -hmm. okay guys this whole this whole line that you've been fed by you know the three or five old school cash buyers in your market that are like <laughs> i need it at 70 percent minus fix up cost wow. and that's the price that i need to have it at yes if it's under 150,000 if it's a if it's below, above that then it's going to be way 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 smaller margins that they're looking to work with because they're keeping it going this is what they do all day long and the more buyers you have the more opportunities you have to mm -hmm. sell these deals and 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 that means you get more deals per year yeah and I, one thing to touch on the other side of that is if you're a wholesaler and you're trying to sell a house to a fix and flipper like Rahima or myself, um, and you're like, well, you're going to make 10 grand. You're going to make 10 grand. Number one, you're probably not underwriting it wrong. You're, yeah. you know, you're not counting, counting on whole or any, selling the house with a realtor after yeah. the fact. That's a part of it. Holding costs, um, taxes, um, keeping on utilities, HOA dues. Like you're not counting any of that, but like, it's just like one small mistake one small thing like when you're twenty thousand is the minimum yeah okay. yeah so like I, all the time people are like what you're gonna make 10 grand that's better than a kick in the pants and you're really like that greedy and it's like no i'm probably gonna lose 1400 bucks when the whole thing's done right. like what are you talking about yeah there's no buffer so yeah just uh count on like 10 percent return yeah. if you're trying to sell a house bare minimum to a fix and flipper because they won't even look at it What's hot right now? What's 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 working? What is, what is something that you're just getting a lot of bang for your buck when you're putting into these properties? Is it the? Uh, it's always going to be floor plan, obviously, but yeah. like, so give us something. Give us something that's kind of like you I'll, know. I'll tell you what it is. The buyers, and it's the buyers like right now. Thing. The buyers right now they they're looking because they're buying at the top of the what they feel like is the top of their market, right? They're they're scraping every every like bar mitzvah check they're they're cashing in the bar mitzvah bonds for that down payment right they're they're going in hard and when we can somehow integrate a new large ticket item like a roof or a hvac or windows if we can integrate that into our budget that seems to be a huge thing for buyers right now if yeah. they know that we don't, i don't have to think about this roof for 
30 years, or I don't have to think about this HVAC for 25 years, or these windows, that makes that sort of pushes them towards our property versus somebody who didn't bother to do that. So sometimes we can, we can minimize our design. You know, we're not married to any particular design. I, I know after I figure out my big ticket items, how much do I have left for my small ticket items? Right. Like flooring and paint. Because those are literally the small ticket items, guys. Don't get hung up on your floor and your paint and your lights and your counters and your – who cares? People who buy a house, they want to make sure that they're not the roof's not going to cave in. And yeah. if, you, if you haven't had your roofer come out and check that roof before you started spending money, you oh. made your first mistake. Yes. Because you know when it'll come back? At the end of the project when they have an inspection. inspection. Yeah. And, then, and now it's like, well, we I had a roofer come out and look at it, and he's saying that it's going to cost $25,000 to fix this roof. Where it was probably about a you know a thousand dollar service would have fixed it. Yeah, yeah. And do you do that? Do you bring your roofer in every time? Every time. Every time. And then what about like the mechanicals, mm -hmm. the heaters, the yeah, right the, away the we AC, do the, we the, do the plumbing. HVAC. We do the HVAC within the first week of starting that flip. We do, we get the HVAC um, serviced. Yep. And, and make sure that they're working okay. And then we do it again at the end of the flip. And people ask me, why do you do that? Because when you're painting. And you're renovating a house, you have paint and dust in the duct systems, and that gets into the HVAC. And now all of a sudden, the fact that you serviced it doesn't mean anything. No. The buyers are coming in, they're like, this is this is a dirty system. And and it's not. It's only been 30 days, but it's a dirty system because of the work that you've done in that house. So you always have to service at the beginning of the project and again at the end of the project before you go to market. And then I always send my guys the day before the inspection and say, go make sure all the valves are, are good. Go make sure nothing's leaking. Go check the recepts. Go check the GFIs. But leave a couple of leave a couple of reset plates off. Give the inspector something to find right when he walks in. Otherwise, this guy's going to be digging around your attic. Yeah. Yeah. And a good thing to do, too, that Raheem is touching on. So this is something you can do as a fix and flipper. But as a wholesaler, what you can do is if you are going to go meet with a seller and you have a contract. And so what are you going to do? You're going to take pictures of the property so mm -hmm. that you can go sell it. Mm -hmm. What I want you to do is make sure. I mean, Pace used to crawl all over people's roofs. I'm not saying you need to do that and kill yourself. But go take a picture of the hot water heater and focus in on the part of the label where it says what year it's from. Mm -hmm. Go take a picture of the AC unit. This is something that people like Rahima and I are looking at because a lot of these are as is. Like a lot of these fix and flips that we're buying off market mm -hmm. are as is. So if you can go and you can make sure that you include those pictures... I mean, some of you need lessons on how to take pictures too. Take a picture of the whole room. I don't care about the seller's personal property. Yeah, they but, take a picture of the sofa. <laughs> yeah, but um, please, you know, just think it takes like two seconds to be like, hey, where's your hot water heater? And go take a picture of that. Hey, yep. where's your AC unit? If you can't find it, if you don't want to be awkward, you don't want to be traipsing all over the seller's house while they're looking at you like you're weird. But including those in your, in your pictures will help you sell your deal. TTP Insider, we have a checklist. It's in the perfect offer pack. It's got a checklist of all the pictures and, and, and guides to take those pictures. Because a, a room, you can see a whole room if you take a picture here mm -hmm. as opposed to here shooting down. There's just little tips. Yeah. There's just little tips that'll help you out. And the, the, the reason you say that is because if you see these pictures as a cash buyer, you can make a decision faster. 100%. You're like, okay, I understand what's going on here. We can put together the budget. We want it. We're going. Mm -hmm. So that's our job is to give them as much like over communicate what is going on with this property so that people can make a decision. Do you guys buy most of your property sight unseen or do you uh, see yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. I don't, I don't think I've ever been able to walk into a property before we've already committed to it. Yeah. I well, never get that luxury. What if there's a big hole in the foundation. What I if mean, there's that's skeletons? Just it. That's just it. I'm really relying on, on those pictures. And I'll, and I'll give you an example of when that's come to bite, bite me in the ass one time. Okay. We were working on a house. Um, and they, and I didn't get pictures that would have let me know that this property was a grow up, right? So I didn't get the pictures of the interior closets that would have let me know that, Hey, this property is a grow up. And then when yeah. you've got a grow up, you've got all kinds of different issues with mold and HVACs and ducting. And had I known that we probably wouldn't have taken on the project. So pictures are very important. You need to take those pictures, good, bad, and the ugly, take them all, you know, don't feel like. Hey, if I don't take this picture, then the, the buyer won't know. And then I'll be able to sell this house. Trust yeah. me, you guys don't want to get into that situation. Just be just be forthright and honest. 
You want this buyer to be your buyer forever and ever. Be forthright and honest. Yeah. It's better just to disclose. So if you go to a property and you see some mold, take a picture of the mold, send it to the buyer. Yeah. They, you know, it's just, it's just, it's, it's just nothing. Kind of business practices too it's, as a wholesaler. Right. Yeah. If it's a, if it's an experienced fix and flipper, fix and flipper, he knows that's just mm -hmm. a valve or a leaky faucet and you're going to tear out that vanity anyways. That mold mm -hmm. doesn't mean anything because you're going to fix it. Right. But yeah. At least they know that this is an issue. Yeah. And another thing too, to learn as a wholesaler too, is when Pace and I were just wholesaling, we had all these investors who were on our butts, get me in, get me in, get me in. So we'd make these appointments with these sellers. And some of these deals are kind of, you know, you're, they're hanging on by a thread, you know, and then you have 60 people show up and they're telling people and other wholesalers and other daisy chainers. And then you have 60 people come over to walk through the property. It's crazy. So there are, for all of you out there, there are people like Rahima and I that will buy a property as is. We don't need to go walk the property. We don't need to go spook your seller. We don't need to go, you know, tick somebody off. We don't need to go ruin your deal. You know, if you take good pictures and, you know, we'll buy it. We'll buy it as is. We're used to that. We're used to buying stuff sight unseen. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we sell 95% of them. Yeah. We've got a question from the, yes. uh, yeah, <laughs> from the audience, from the audience. Hey, Rahima. Hey, uh, <laughs> good to see you again. Nice to see um, you. Just wondering what, knowing what you know now, what did you wish you knew when you were first starting, when you were flipping? When I was first flipping, Jamil and I would get caught up in what we wanted it to look like, right? We were like, Oh, we would want this in our house. We would want this and we would want, and you know what? You have to differentiate your personal tastes, preferences, and wants into what's just going to sell, what's going to sell. And the best way to figure out what's going to sell is look at the, look at, take the zip code, get on Zillow, put that zip code in and see what are the houses on the market that are in that zip code look like? How are they being finished as renovations? How long did it take for that house to sell? There's your template right there. You know, don't, it's not personal. It's not a legacy project. Nobody's even going to know it was you. And they're not, they're not going to remember you after six months after buying the house. So, you know, do what's working for the people in that neighborhood because you can't necessarily take designs from Colorado and make them work in New York and vice versa, right? You, you kind of have to look in the area that you're dealing with and what's working in the area that you're dealing with. I'm not saying don't add a little bit of pizzazz. That's, you know, you have pizzazz. So put it, sprinkle your pizzazz in there, or as Jamil and Pace like to say, they're razzle dazzle, but do what works, do it over and over again, and don't get emotionally invested into the project. Thank you, Rahima. Thank you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's huge because it's like one of those things where it's like it, it, it was always difficult for me to do that, to follow that advice because I'd be like, oh, I'm going to go drive by this house that I totally remodeled and I'm going to see it all the time and I'm going to be so proud of how much I made and how beautiful it is and what I did for the neighborhood. And it's wonderful. And then you never drive by that house again. You know, you never drive it. I mean, well, my, my husband remembers where my, my projects were. I never remember. I'm like sold out, done. Yeah, the Next. What Pace and I did, we were so emotionally attached to this house. We went mm -hmm. over there all the time. We'd like go take the kids and have dinner in the house and look at what the guys did for the day. And then we're like, oh, this needs sod in the backyard. This house is going to have a family. So we put fresh sod out there. We did all sorts of stuff. We totally over improved. At the end of it, we made 10 grand. Thank gosh. But guess who it sold to? It sold to Invitation Homes. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Yeah. It literally doesn't yeah, matter. So don't get emotional. It's a faceless entity. Yeah, 100%, yeah. Yeah. And then you go, you go to the property that you put all this work and all this pride and all this love into, and they haven't done any landscaping or they have, you know, yeah. like there's weeds everywhere. There's cars just falling apart. You're like, oh, what? I know. I tell you, I did a house for, for, we used to take on partners in the beginning. Jamil and I would take on a partner. So the partner was in charge of paying for the house to close the house or to get the hard money. It was all on them and they had to pay for the renovation. It was my sweat and we and we take the we'd split the profits 50 50. this was back in the day here in arizona yeah and this guy he it was a red brick house and he insisted that we put in sod at the at the beginning and the front of the house hi corbin and i said i don't think it's necessary i think we can just either rock it or leave it rake it or leave it or rock it i think that's all we have to do because with sod comes irrigation 
So now you're not only spending money on this. You guys all look so good. I want my t-shirt. <laughs> look at the um, shirt. Show them your shirt. You take me take over. And he, <laughs> and he just insisted. And I went back to go get my armless box, and they literally had made that sod into a parking lot. Oh, yeah. They didn't recognize the house. Oh, yeah. Because the sod was gone. It was it was run over. So, guys, you know, really don't get emotionally involved. This is a business. This is just a business yeah. for you. I would I would flip a, a a house and really put all this time and then they before they moved in they'd repaint the whole thing, you know, in crazy colors. Mm -hmm. Like all of a sudden this beautiful oh this is a beautiful uh, brick house and we cleaned it up and we got all the stucco off and it's beautiful sandblasted and then they paint it white or whatever or paint yeah. it green or whatever. Yeah. It's like you know people are gonna make it their own. Yes. So, do your best, put it out there. But if you're emotionally attached to these deals, you're going to get your heart broken more when you see what they do to it after it's oh, yeah. after you're out of there. Don't say you yourself for, for heartbreak, just in and out. Do your, do your best, put your heart in it and do your best, but then don't leave it there. Pick yourself up and go to yeah. the next one. But this goes back to something Rahima also said is spend the money in doing something that's like a big ticket item that will help you sell the house later. So something like roof, new AC unit, new hot water heater. These things are going to make a bigger impression and a bigger dent than Pace and I put hanging up curtains and putting sod in the backyard. Oh, yeah. So and a more lasting you know, thing for them. So right now in a market like this, Rahima is a hundred percent right. Do something like that. Do mm -hmm. a new roof, you know, where it might cost Rahima, you know, 6,500 bucks to do a new roof. It's going to make a massive difference for that buyer. It's going to help us sell that house really fast. And the realtor representing the buyer too is going to think that we know our stuff yep. because a lot of realtors that represent buyers have no idea about the investing side. They have no idea about fix and flippers. And so they're telling that your client, Oh, this is another fix and flip. It's going to be shoddy work. Oh, yeah, this house looks pretty on the outside. There's a lot of problems. But when they go look at a Rahima product, they know that this fix and flipper actually cares. Yep. Guys, over 500 people watching. We want to thank you so much, you know, especially on a national championship basketball night like tonight. You guys are here. You guys are putting in the work. You're, you're listening to this incredible, incredible instruction and advice um that these these ladies are giving you because it's uh, it's spot on i mean you guys have it down oh, yeah. you guys have it down at this point and uh take advantage of it yeah. you can have this you can leverage their experience right now by not getting emotional by not waiting for things to come in because it fits your design plan or whatever else like get these things done go after the big ticket items in the beginning make sure you know what you're up against there you know be confident in your numbers so you don't have to run over to every property that's put in front of you um and and get these buy these properties sight unseen and go and get it done so yeah. that's right carlos ncaa doesn't pay you that pay the bills <laughs> yeah. and too i wanted to say you know don't look at Rahima and I and be like, I could never get there. You know, Rahima, what did, how did Rahima start? She just started. And so everyone all the time asks how I keep up with pace. And it's, I've decided in my life, number one, I'm on this roller coaster ride and it's good fun. But I always tell myself, cause there's so much stuff that I'm like, I would never, could never do that in another life. But right now in the past 10 years, I've, what I say to myself is Nike, just do it. Yep. So just go out and do it you know, and never be, yeah. Never be afraid to fail because what yeah, does that yeah, word doesn't yeah, even exist. Just go out and do it. It's just, yeah. It's just, you know, it, it didn't work out this time. It'll work out next time. It's always, you're always learning. You're always learning. And That's it's, it. it's never a fail. It's just an opportunity to learn. Mm -hmm. Love it. Something you talked about on Saturday was about over improving, which you just mentioned, which I think is a good topic because we were at a house. Get a little bit closer. Uh, we were at a house. Okay. Oh, good. Sorry. okay. We were at a house where my thought is, wow, let's go big on the backyard. And you said, no, this is a starter house. We've got to keep it minimal. And I had not thought of that before. Mm -hmm. So maybe you could just expand on that. Absolutely. So I, I remember that conversation. We were at that house in Mesa. And then you're like, what are you going to do in the backyard? And I said, I don't know. And you said, what do you mean you don't know? I said, because I see how much money's left. And then I make my decision. So I know I'm going to have to do something with that pool deck. I'm probably just going to fill in the couple cracks and paint it and, and brighten it up uh, with pool decking paint. Uh, and then I'm just going to clean up the backyard. And you're like, well, what are you going to do in the front yard? And I said, probably pretty well the same. I'm just going to clean it up. And you said, well, how do you do that? And I said, 600 grand right now is an entry-level house in, in, in 
the valley in Arizona Valley. So um, I don't I don't really have to do so much there now. If I'm going to sell a million dollar house, which we will, which we're actually going to do on on season two, we're going to sell a couple million dollar houses. I have no choice at that point than to pay attention to the land, the front landscape and the back landscape. So it really depends on what am I going to sell this house for? Who's my buyer and how much do they care? Yeah. So Rahima, you were buying multifamily in Canada. Yeah. And then fixing those up. Yep. And then you came out here. Yep. What year was that? 2012. When did you do your first mar deal out here? 2012. Let so me, right, right when you got in. Right when, I mean, Jamil was, he was already in California. He was already making connections and figuring things out. And as soon as we got here, he's like, hey, can you, can you flip this house? And I said, I don't even know anybody here. He's like, I'm sure you'll figure it out. <laughs> and that's how it worked. Yeah. yeah. And it was in Levine, right? It was, uh, the first one we did was in Tempe. Okay. And it was literally okay. like, a, a, I found a guy who had a, who was a tile guy. He was an older guy and he could do tile. And from him came my drywaller and from my drywaller came my painter and from my painter came my, you know, and that's, it just snowballed from that. It's like, I know a guy, I have a guy, or I go to the window supply company and I'm like, Hey, I need a window installer. And I'm not going to call some big company to install my windows. I want to buy my windows in bulk from you. And I need to know who do you, who normally comes in here to buy windows. And I just hung around and found my window installer and he's like my window guy. Yep. And Rahima, you are the queen of relationships. So you're probably yep. taking this for granted to tell everyone, but you had mentioned bringing donuts to our suppliers. But one of the reasons why you were able to, you know, find a drywaller, find a painter, find an electrician from these people that you had made such a good connection with is because you were able to build a relationship with them. And that goes along with not only how you treat people, but also how you pay them. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Rahima, you've made sure that these people not only can put food on their table, but they're actually making good money by working with you. They are. They are so don't money. nickel and dime your contractors. Well, you know, you, yeah. you might get away with it on your on the job that they're working on, but you're not going to see them again. Yep. They're not going to have the same heart that, they're, that they, they're, they will have if you take care of them because they're people and they need to be taken care of. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you this, because it, in my experience, and it's just an old famous saying that really hits home with contractors is you got speed, you got quality and you got cost. Right. You can only pick two. Yeah, you yep. can't have all three. Right. You can only pick two. So which ones do you guys go with? You're paying more to get it done fast. I, I am. It, I am. It's like, more to get it done it's fast. Not the guys that are going to be in there, you know, no. super long doing the like. You know, is, is, is it quality? Is it 80% of people I, that charge double? I want or? quality and then I want speed. So I'm I'm okay to spend an extra 20% to get the quality and the speed. Got it. So yeah. you're spending the money to get the quality and yeah. the speed. Yeah. And I'm here to tell you that Abel, Rahima's um, main contractor, and her, he is legitimately one of her closest friends. She loves his children. Yep. She loves him. She treats him incredibly well. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't just give him donuts because at the end of the day, donuts only go so far. People don't want treats. They want to make money with you. Yep. And so Rahima's making sure that as she goes, she's making money and Abel's making money too. Yeah. Yeah. We're looking to change lives and yep. not just ours. We're looking yep. to change the lives of everybody who, who helps us through it. We want to help you through it. We want to change your life like you're changing our life. How do you know a contractor is good? You know what I mean? Like, can I tell you my hack? Yes. I I get to I get to know their wives. Okay. You know, I I have a barbecue, and I say, hey guys, let's get together, let's have a barbecue. And if you have some other people that that do work, like if you have a tiler or a painter, and you want to bring them in, bring them over, and we'll and I usually will rent a truck. Or I'll rent a caterer. They'll they'll make tacos, and we'll have a good time. And I get to know the wives. I don't sit with the guys. I sit with the wives. That's huge. And I almost always hire married men. Right. I I need them. I need to know that they have a reason to show up to work every day. Yeah, that's incredible. And I, so, is it once a year? Is it twice a year? Is it oh, quarterly? Is I it, mean, we we know, generally have a we have a definitely a big Christmas party, and that's where we get some new trades will come in around Christmas, right? Because yeah, the New Year is starting, and they're you know thinking, hey man, this boss actually had a party for their for their for the workers, so maybe we do that. Maybe maybe we come on to this crew for a bit and see what's going on. Um, we do, we do summer barbecues if we've if we've had like you know ten really hard houses. 
I'll say, hey, well, let's take out some money. Let's let's treat everybody else and make sure their wives come. And I sit with the wives and just make sure that everybody's happy. Everybody's feeling good about what their husbands are doing and making sure that they're showing up to work every day. Love That's it. not to say, Brett, that I don't have faith in men. I do. Oh, I get it. But I it's nice it. to know that you, know, you, you don't have to explain it to me. I get it. <laughs> No, I totally get it. But I mean, I think that it's wonderful. And not only that, like how many other people are doing that? I don't know. I think so if, you, if you get a job and somebody else gets a job and they're going to pay the same amount, who's getting that deal? Who's getting the, the work done? You are. Mm -hmm. Right. You are. Have a, have a, guys, if you're going to get into the world of flipping and you love that model and you want to get into that twice a year barbecues with your contractors and their family. That's a, that is a wonderful, wonderful cheat code. I mean, it is. And some beer. And some beer. Yeah. As, yeah. Tons of beer. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> 100%. That is, that is just absolutely incredible. And, and they feel like they're part of your company. They feel yeah. like they're part of your team. Mm -hmm. So when you, you know, ask they're, them to come in on a Sunday, you. because I got to get this done before Monday, they come in on a Sunday. You know, they don't think of it like, no, I'm not doing it. They think, no, I'm part of this group. I'm part of this family. I'm part of this team. I'm in. Let's do it. Well, what do we got to do? Yeah. I love it. What are you doing in Vegas, by the way? What am I doing in Vegas? Oh, I went to the Grammys. What? Yeah, yeah. yeah I was at the Grammys yesterday. I know. Rahima was like texting me about an appraisal. And then I was like, she's like, oh, yeah, I'm driving to Vegas. And I was like, what for? And just casually the Grammys. And I was like. That's normal. Yeah. So the Grammys as like uh, just right. an audience member or, yeah, or nominated for something. <laughs> you didn't see me. I was singing right after Justin Bieber. No. I love it. <laughs> well, oh, you like I Justin have, Bieber. I have a <laughs> in the music industry and I'm like, hey, if you ever get extra tickets to the Grammys, I'd love to take my daughter to the Grammys. And he's like, I got tickets and it's in Vegas. You're coming. I'm like, I'm in. And so we went to the Grammys and we got to watch all those excellent performers up close and personal. Someone hacked my Instagram, so I can't I see what's that. going That's on. Horrible. But I want to see what you wore and what the shoes are. If anyone doesn't follow Rahima, <laughs> follow her just for the shoes. So. It's a small shoe problem. Yeah. Yeah. That is awesome. What about um, what about rentals, Rahima? Do you play in that space? Yeah, I do. I have some rentals. Actually, I have some rentals that I rent out, and I have others that I bought that I that I sell on Seller Finance. So, um, for example, recently I bought one for a hundred grand. I put in 20, so I mean, it was 120, right? And yeah. all I did for that 20 is I changed the AC. I fixed, it was a rent, it was a, a condo, so I didn't have to worry about the roof, but I changed the AC, I changed the windows, and I cleaned it up, and I put in new cabinetry and new plumbing. That's all I did. I didn't do any design work. I didn't care about any of that. And then I found somebody who was willing to buy it for 240. So I paid 120 all in. They're doing 240, but... They obviously it's not worth 240 because I just got it for 120. It's maybe worth 160, but right. they can't qualify in regular the regular conventional financing world. So I'm holding their note at nine percent at 30 years, and I've already taken my hundred grand right off the top. Right. Yeah. And every th this is such an untapped market what she's talking about because these people usually are self-employed or they're not from this country they can't qualify for a mortgage for whatever reason and so you're giving them the ability to become homeowners and to not rent and then you're also creating a situation it's like truly a win-win but you're also creating a situation to where this isn't a rental so you're not going over there and fixing a leaky faucet in the middle of the night right this is this they have they they're homeowners yeah, they're on title. They home now. They're on title. So you don't call Chase Bank when your toilet's clogged. You don't call me. You know, I'm no. your, I'm your lender. I'm not your I'm not your landlord. Yep. So she's turned herself into her lender. She's made, you know, a, a good profit and she's given a family or a person who can't buy a home out of the rental rat race and now they're actually a homeowner yep. because of Rahima. And 9% is still a great interest rate. It's not I know a bad that interest rate, spoiled, yeah. but that's still a good interest rate historically. So mm -hmm. she is doing a really good job and that that's an amazing thing to do. And there's not a lot of people out there who are doing that. So if you haven't thought about doing that or if you have a traditional rental that the year lease is coming up due and they're not going to renew, think about doing something that she just described. Do a seller you know, finance. You know I learned that. I learned that from Pace. Yeah. He was talking about selling his truck and how he couldn't get somebody to buy it outright. And he's like, but I could get somebody to make payments. And I thought, hey, wait a second. I'm going to do that. It well, was the best mastermind I ever went to was sitting at Pace Morby's mastermind. It was awesome. That's your dad. Yeah. What do you think? 
Hi, Corbin. She's been asking to Monday go on stalking. stage all day, and so here she is. She's not even paying attention. How Say was your nap? Time. Did you have a good nap? Say yeah. Yeah. She wants a snack. Oh. She sees you. She that. knows that you're you've got snacks usually. So. Oh yeah, her. yeah, yeah. You're right. I should have snacks for you. I'm sorry. She's she's gone. She's she needs to come home. How she's much, in Vegas. How how much time do you guys spend on the phone a day? Oh my gosh, Rahima, way more than me. I mean, I, oh gosh, I feel like I'm pretty much always on the phone. Actually, mm -hmm. yeah, Rahima. Yeah, I'm on the phone from my working hours from like 5 a.m. till 7 p.m. I'm on the phone, but 7 p.m. hits and I I don't look at the phone. I'm done. Right. Yeah, no, I, I I love that, but I think it's really important. Like, I remember just sitting around uh, when uh, when I had lost everything, and I just wasn't doing anything. I wasn't talking to anybody, and I was like, okay, I need to do something. I'm gonna just go knock on doors to just talk to somebody. I know that th this is moving me in the right direction, building some momentum. And I think you know everybody out there, if whether whether this is a side hustle or whether it's full time or whatever else, this thing. This is a portal. This is a portal to all of those financial things that you want, all the financial dreams and goals yes. and everything. It all comes down to you communicating effectively with people, whether they be contractors, whether they be agents trying to buy the properties or wholesalers selling the properties, whether it be people, you know, us out there talking to distressed property owners or the people that represent them. You got to be on the phone all the time. I love that you're. I love that TTP is talk to people. I love that. Right. You're not just talking to them on the phone. The fact that you're so charismatic and you're talking to people face to face all the time yep. is is a lot to do with how successful you are. Right. You're just you're in. You're there. You're in front of them. You're talking to them. They see that smile. They're disarmed, and That's you're it. getting. And you know you're you're making that conversation and, and doing business. Yep. Yeah. And speaking from if somebody's watching this and you're not necessarily comfortable on the phone. I, my first job, I had such a hard time even saying, hi, how's your, how's your day? And I was a teller at a bank and I had a customer come up to me. I did the transaction. I handed them their receipt and they go, let me speak to your manager. My manager came over and was like, what's the problem? She's rude. Uh -huh. Your employee is rude. Sure. And so he's, he, after he apologized, they left and he said, you know what? You're one of the nicest people I've ever met. I know that's not true, but you cannot not talk to people. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to sit behind you and all I want you to say is, hi, how's your day? And so these are skills that can be cultivated. And I cold called like me of all people and I got deals done. Mm -hmm. I made money. And so like if you think that you don't have it, if you're if you're looking at Brent, like, of course, look at him. So charismatic. Sounds great. Has a good voice. He's not afraid. And then he's got the hair. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we oh, yeah, we both have the hair, <laughs> but anybody can do it. So I'm Seriously. I'm living proof. You just have to do it. Nike, just do it. Just get started. Get on the phone. Sound like an idiot. Trip over your words. You will figure it out. hundred yep. percent. Absolutely. You will. My yep. first job was actually, I used to sell long distance plans oh, and yeah. high speed internet over the telephone. I love that. <laughs> Jamil and I both did it. We worked for a telephone company. Well, and, and listen, like. You guys are both unbelievable communicators. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like th that helps. Was that a family thing? Are you guys both like, like, is your no, whole family? Jamil, just, like, Jamil is definitely the, the, the master communicator and I'm just sort of taking notes. I would just say, you know, listen, all respect to Jamil, you crush. <laughs> He's never you know bought, brought saying? me like, donuts before. Yeah. <laughs> and listen, if, if it's, if it comes down to Jamil or you on an appointment, I'm taking you every oh, time. Oh, I love it. I'm I taking it. you every time. I love you're gonna it. Have, you're you're going to have like their, their date of births. You're going to have their, uh, all their kids information. You're going to be, yeah. I love it. Yeah. So, I mean, that, 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 that stuff really matters, but, but people don't, you know, Rima, it's, it's so important to bring heart to this business. You know what I mean? Bring actual compassion for what people are going through. And and these people are our neighbors. Mm -hmm. Like if yeah. you really want to go crazy with it, 400 trillion to one odds that any human being is here, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the absolute truth. Yeah. So everybody's walking around saying, uh, you know, make me feel important. Just make me feel important. And you go out there and you make them feel important. 
and that is the underlying skill of of everything that we do. Mm -hmm. It's the it's the underlying skill. And if yep. you do that, you win. You can't lose if you go there with that servant's heart and really go to make people feel important. That's what you're doing by doing this thing. Absolutely. You know, by, by, by talking to the neighbors, by bringing them donuts, by doing barbecues, yeah, by meeting right. the wives, right? Yep. It's the little things. And I think, and I'll just say from my perspective as, as a man, sometimes we forget about those things. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We're so like head down, chop wood, run around. <laughs> duh, I got to win. Dum, dum, dum. You know what I mean? And sometimes you have to really bring, you got to, you got to let your, let your brain kind of turn off for a second, turn your heart on and, um, and let it, let it take over, you know, really be compassionate out there. Yeah. And that's one of the, actually one of the most satisfying things that, I like we actually do in our business is wholesale because you are meeting sellers and you know, sellers aren't giving away equity for nothing. They're giving away equity for some sort of pain and just being able to help somebody is incredibly emotionally fulfilling. And it also reminds you how blessed you are. So, yeah. um, you know, Absolutely. we're all here and we are helping people and it's a really good feeling. And that's why this business is so incredible. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we look at it because we've been in it for so long that, you know, sometimes we don't really remember what it was like before we had real estate. And then you get into real estate and you're like, oh, my gosh, like I am in the driver's seat. here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I can. There's the 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 only thing I won't do is stop. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's the only thing that I can't do is stop this business. Yeah. I mean, you have, you have the two most inspirational people in your studio today. Right. I mean, they, their whole lives are so inspirational. They get to travel around the world. They're making money. They're doing everything that they want to do in life. Who gets that? They're, yeah. And they're doing it with real estate. I love that. Yeah. 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 Yep. So I just, you know, this business is fantastic. There's so many different ways to go about it, but you got to focus. Yeah. You got to focus. You really got to. I, and I really, I really encourage everybody that this first year find out how to find the deals. Unless you have a good budget, unless you have a good experience, unless you come from a family that, you know, um, can can kind of guide you guide down you, the path, yeah. give you the blueprint. Got that um, family name or ugly something. Ugly house. Yeah. Yeah. Manny's right about the tiny version of Pace here. Oh, yeah. Ugly houses, big checks. Yeah. That's it. Just go for that. Build up your confidence there. And then as you start feeling that 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 pull to be more creative and to do the flips, um, then start investigating that, but set this up first. Yeah. Set yeah absolutely. It up first. And I feel do. confident too, that you like what we offer, we can help people. Like we are actually helping people and oh, we yeah. have the solutions to get it done. So that's a, a huge motivation for you to get on the phone and start talking to people because that is true. There are people out there that need help. And the only way that they can have help and get out of a bad situation is something that we can provide. Yep. Something that we know and we take it for granted. We think that everyone can figure out a way out of their problems. And that's not always the case. Absolutely. So get out there and get on the phones for sure. And if you're if you do decide you do want to flip the house um, and you need help, just, you know, um, get on my Instagram, DM me. I'm always willing to answer questions. If you want to FaceTime me a property and say, hey, what do you think? What do you what would you do here? I'm happy to help. So what's my Instagram handle? Uh, Rahima something B. I don't know. I think it's Rahima B. Yeah. Can you I'll put it on the show? It it We're going to put it in the comment section, guys. There you go. Perfect. That is incredible. Oh, there, there it is. That's it. Rahima B. There, perfect. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> that is an incredible resource for everybody out there. Yeah, I'm happy to help. That is good. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for having yeah. me. Any I am final like, thoughts, ladies? Oh, my gosh. I'm just so like blown away. This is honestly my favorite thing that Pace does. I love this. I love Drake. This whole thing is just like, ah. Oh. 10 out of 10. I love it. But yes. I am so happy to and be here. I am I honored so that pumped. you would even allow me incredible. here. But I love this. And Rahima, I love you. You're beautiful. I love you. Tell uh, Ingrid so where pumped. that jacket is later. Yeah. So the next time, next time, if you ever have, if I would love to come back. If you ever have us come back, I definitely want one of those t-shirts. I'm oh, coming to the studio and I want to, I want to be on that team. Done. All done right. And done. Thank awesome. you so much. Thank you, you guys. You both are incredible. Thank you for this. Is one of the best. I'm what an you. awesome opportunity I to, to be with you. Yeah, so All handsome. Right. So All handsome. Right, guys. <laughs> Love you guys. Love you. Bye, honey. Or just say squat up. So squat up and enjoy the show. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. One, two, three. So, so squat up and enjoy the show.
What are you doing? I didn't say nothing. Why? I don't know. <laughs> I okay. Forgot. So squat up and enjoy the show! Cool. I think we should use the one where Jamil doesn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs>